Hey loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts with another free crochet pattern. This is the Daphne Afghan, a square baby blanket. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite baby blanket projects because it's fun, easy, and the color options are endless. This is a great way to use up your crochet leftover yarn or even incorporate some cake yarn that you have lying around. While watching this video, I encourage you to pull up the Daphne Afghan pattern, which is available for free on my blog, toicblog.com. You can also find a printer friendly PDF version of the pattern on my website, tlyarncrafts.com. Links to both of these resources are in the description. The original sample of the Daphne Afghan uses three cakes of mandala ombre in the color tranquil and three balls of basic stitch premium in the color cream. Both of these yarns are from Lion Brand and you can find links to them in the description if you'd like to explore them further. If you're excited to make the Daphne Afghan, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss future patterns, product reviews, and giveaways. For this tutorial, I'm making a smaller version of the Daphne Afghan using some colorful worsted weight yarn from my stash. Mix and match what you have to personalize your project. In addition to the yarn, I also need a 5.5mm crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. We'll start our blanket by making four triangles the same way. We'll start with the magic ring, sometimes called the magic loop. Everyone does it a little differently, but I'll demonstrate the easiest way I know. Grab your main color, in this case I'm using gray. Start by holding the tail of your yarn in your palm with your thumb, wrap the tail around your first two fingers, and hold it with your pinky. When you flip your hand over, you've got two strands. Insert your hook under the first strand and over the second and pull up the loop. Then yarn over and pull through with that second strand again. Gently drop the loop from your hand and your magic loop is ready. From here we want to chain 3, which counts as a double crochet throughout this pattern. Then put 3 double crochets into your magic ring. Here's 1, here's 2, and here's 3. Follow that with a chain 1, and 4 more double crochets. There's 1, two, three, and four. From here, drop your hook and let's do a quick count. One, two, three, four double crochet, a chain, and one, two, three, four more double crochets. Now we'll want to gently pull the tail of our magic ring to close. And we've got this cute little half moon. From here we'll insert our hook again, chain three, and turn our work to begin row two. We'll place three double crochets in the space between the first and second double crochet of the row below. So just insert into that space. Here's one double crochet, here's the second, and the third. We'll skip the next three double crochets and head to that chain one space. and place three double crochets. Here's one, two, and three. Follow that with a chain one, and three more double crochets in that same space. Here's one, two, and three. Now we wanna skip the next three double crochets and go to the space before the last double crochet and place three double crochets there. Here's one. Here's two and three. And now we wanna find the third chain of our turning chain. There's the third chain and double crochet in that to end our row. Now at this last step, we want to stop so we can change our color. For the Daphne Afghan, we'll change color every two rows. We'll do two rows of our main color and then two rows of our accent and switch back and forth. Leaving a nice long tail, we're going to yarn over our hook with our accent color and pull through those last two loops to change our color. Notice that we didn't cut our main color. We're actually going to carry that up the side of our work, so let's just leave that hanging. 
chain three to start the next row and turn your work. Place three double crochets between the first and second double crochet of the row below. There's one, two, and three. Skip the next three double crochets and place three double crochets in the following space. One, two, and three. We'll skip the next three double crochets and that gets us to our chain one space where we'll put three double crochets. A chain one and three more double crochets. We'll skip the next three double crochets and place three double crochets in the following space. Even though there aren't chain ones between our three double crochet groups, it's going to be pretty easy to find those spaces. To finish off the row, place three double crochets in the space before the final double crochet. Here's one, two, and three. Tug those stitches out the way as you need to to find the third chain of your turning chain and place a double crochet in that third chain. Chain three, turn your work, and we're going to essentially just repeat this row. Three double crochets in the space after the first double crochet. Skip three double crochets and go into that next space with three more double crochets. Skip three more double crochets and three double crochets in the next space. Skip three more double crochets and we get to our chain one space where we place three double crochets. Here's the second and the third chain one, three more double crochets in that same space. Skip three double crochets, three double crochets in the following space. Three double crochets in the next space. And then three double crochets in the space before the last double crochet. Now remember we do two rows of our accent, so when we get to the last double crochet here, it'll be time to change our color. So count up to the third chain, complete your double crochet to the last step, then we're going to drop our accent color, and we can cut that because we're done with that for this triangle. We'll grab the length of yarn for our main color that's coming from the ball and gently, without tugging too tightly, yarn over our hook and pull through to change color. And we'll move on just repeating that last row for the remainder of this triangle. You'll notice floats with your main color, but we'll work over that when it comes to the border, so don't worry about it right now. To make the Daphne Afghan as originally designed, each of your triangles should have a total of 26 rows. This will result in a blanket that is 35 and a half inches square once it's all done. Make your triangles larger or smaller for a different size blanket. I kept working on my triangle and I'm just about done with the last row. And your last row should also be done in your main color. I've got three double crochets to put in that space before the last double crochet. And then I'm gonna find the third chain of my turning chain and place a double crochet there as well. At this point, I want to fasten off so I can cut my main color. These weren't my original Daphne Afghan colors, but I'm kind of digging them. This whole kind of ombre situation is super fun. Okay. So now is actually a really good time to weave in our ends, which I kind of hate doing. So I'm gonna try this trick I keep seeing on TikTok. One sec. Holy crap, okay, I can't believe that worked. Um, so my ends are woven in, and for some reason I also have three identical triangles just sitting here. Ends woven in, 
perfectly crocheted. Uh, don't ask me how I did it. It's just some weird camera trick I saw on the internet. Um, okay, let's continue. Now it's time for assembly. We want to arrange our triangles with the right sides facing up and the center tips of the triangles facing one another. There isn't really a right and a wrong side of our triangles, but I found that the side where you see the fronts of the double crochets on even numbered rows felt like the right side to me. We're gonna create two seams in our project, one here and then one here. So we'll just grab our first two motifs to start. We're going to work our seam in the same color as our main color with the right sides facing. Place a slip knot on your hook and we're gonna find the first stitches that we'll work into. For this first motif, we're gonna find the third chain of our turning chain and insert our hook into the back loop of that chain. Now we wanna find the back loop of the first double crochet on this motif and insert our hook in the back loop of that stitch as well. Take your time here, there's no rush. Yarn over and then pull through all the loops on our hook. We're doing a slip stitch seam. Find the next stitch, insert in the back loop, and the following stitch, insert in the back loop, yarn over and pull through all the loops. And we're going to continue this all the way up this seam. It's gonna be super important that you're matching stitch for stitch as you go up your seam to make sure your project stays even. If you're concerned that you'll miss some stitches, you can always use some stitch markers along the seam to help you keep your way. Fast forwarding a little, I'm nearly at the tip of my triangles where those chain spaces are going to join each other. So I've got them right here. I just wanna insert my hook in the back loop of the chains on both motifs, yarn over and pull through. Now I'm gonna grab my third motif and start attaching that one. I'm just gonna rearrange these motifs and get myself set up here. Now we're going to join at the chain space of these two motifs as well. So I'm gonna insert back into the same back loop of this motif and then into the back loop of the following motif. Make sure you find it so you're going into the chain and not the following stitch. Inserting into the back loop, I'm just gonna yarn over and pull through and then just continue with the seam as normal. Back loop of the following stitch and the corresponding stitch on the next motif, yarn over and pull through for that slip stitch seam. Be sure that you're keeping your tension consistent so you'll have a nice clean seam for your entire project. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just finishing up the seam for these two motifs. I'm gonna continue and I'd like for you to join me back here after you started seaming your other motif and you get to the middle. I'm working the seam up towards the center of my project and I wanna be really specific about how I chose to join those chain spaces at the center of my project. So one more slip stitch here and we're now at our chain space. I'm gonna insert my hook in the back loop of that chain and then I'm gonna go to the motif to the right and I'm gonna insert in the back loop of that chain as well. And then I'm going to go to the motif to the left and insert in the back loop of that chain. With all four loops on my hook, I'm going to now yarn over and pull through gently. At this point, I can rotate my work and start working that final seam on my blanket. Once you get to the end of that last seam, you can go ahead and cut your main color and then it'll be time to make the border. After finishing my seam, I did weave in my end, so you can go ahead and do that. And at this point, we want to find the end of any row on our project. So that can be a turning chain or an actual double crochet. So I found the one that I wanna use. I'm gonna use my main color for my border, but you can use whatever color you like. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up the loop to join. And then we're just gonna chain one, and we're gonna place two single crochets in that same space where we joined. We're gonna find the next row end 
and place two single crochets in that space as well. And we're gonna do that for each double crochet all the way to our corner. So we've got a row end here, two single crochets go in that space, and a row end here, and two single crochets will go in this space as well. Here at the corner, we're gonna chain two and turn our work. We actually aren't gonna place any stitches in the actual corner. We just wanna turn our work and find the next row end, which is a double crochet, and work two single crochets into that space. There's one and two. And we're just gonna continue that all the way down to the next corner, making sure you work around the floats from when you carried up your main color in your work. In case you're wondering what to do when you get to the magic loop at the base of your triangles, we're actually just gonna skip right over them and go to the next row end and continue with placing two single crochets in the space around every row end all the way to the next corner. Then of course, when you get to the corner, chain two, rotate your work, and continue the first round of your border on the following edge. I'm nearly at the end of my first round of my border. Just a couple more row ends to work two single crochets around. Two go in this end. And now I'm ready to join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet of the round. Insert, yarn over, and pull through all loops on your hook. Chain one and turn your work. And now we're gonna work with the wrong side of our project facing us for our second and final round. I'm gonna tighten in a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna find my first single crochet and place a slip stitch in that stitch. Insert, yarn over, and pull through all loops on my hook. For the following stitch, I'm gonna do a double crochet. And I'm gonna repeat this all the way down. Slip stitch in the following stitch, double crochet in the following stitch. Slip stitch in the following stitch, double crochet in the one after that. What's gonna happen here is the height of the double crochets are gonna get pushed to the right side of our work. Slip stitch, followed by a double crochet. Slip stitch, followed by a double crochet. This is gonna create a soft, kind of fluffy look to our border, like little baby clouds. Slip stitch, followed by a double crochet. Here, let's take a look you can already see that soft kind of fluffy looking border starting to emerge. So we're gonna continue with our slip stitch followed by a double crochet all the way down to the corner. Once you get to the corner, take a quick pause and I'll show you what to do there. I'm nearly at my corner here. Slip stitch in the next stitch, double crochet in the following. Got a slip stitch in the one after that and a double crochet in the one after that. So here at the chain two space, which is my corner, I'm gonna slip stitch, double crochet, follow that with another slip stitch in the chain two space. Slip stitch, there we go. And another double crochet in that same space. So slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet in each of your chain two spaces. Now we're gonna go right back into our slip stitch in one, double crochet in the next, down that side. So repeat that all the way around your blanket. Join me here and I'm gonna show you how to finish things. We're almost done with this round of our blanket. We've got a double crochet here, a slip stitch in the following stitch, and then a double crochet in this last stitch. We'll finish up by joining with a slip stitch, and then we can pull our loop up and out and cut our main color. Pull that loop up and out of your work, and you're basically done with your Daphne afghan. All that's left to do is to weave in your ends. From this point, you might notice that your project is a little stiff or that some of your seams aren't lying as flat as you'd like them to. This is where steam blocking comes in handy. I just uploaded a video on how to steam block your acrylic projects, and I'd love if you check that out. 
Well, thanks so much for joining me to make the Daphne Afghan today. I'd love if you shared your projects on Instagram with the hashtag Daphne Afghan, and you can share them in my Facebook group, TLYC Makers. Until next time, I'm Tony of TL Yarncrafts. Bye, y'all.